Uh, do you see this slide uh, convergent boundaries? Yes, we can see. I can see it. Already. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll just have uh, a revision uh, on the last aspects that we discussed, and then we will move to a new a new section. Okay. Uh, we were talking about the convergent plate boundaries. So we <clears throat> we discussed uh, that. There are three three styles of convergent plate boundaries, uh, uh, like uh, ocean ocean collision, continent ocean collision, ocean crust collision, and continent continent collision. Okay, uh, so it is like uh, uh, just different uh, configurations of uh, the possibilities of uh, the collisions, right, convergence. So we have uh, subduction zones uh, created anyway. Uh, in these subduction zones, we get some uh, trench. Trench means uh, the deep area, which is uh, created in this uh, immediately uh, close area of the two plates, uh, the, lim uh, the boundaries. And uh, usually uh, what is happening there is, uh, due to uh, magma, uh, due to magma generation here uh, by undergoing plate, and also due to friction here, uh, there is a huge friction uh, affecting there because these are some thousands of kilometer scale plates moving down. Uh, so it's not moving very uh, easily uh, because the lubrication is not uh, that much, uh, although uh, the water involved their acts as a lubricating material for the downgoing slab to move downwards. However, uh, due to this uh, heavy friction, there can be a large uh, heat production and that heat cause uh, the uh, surrounding uh, crust to be melted. So this crust will be melted. That means uh, mostly the continental part of the crust will be uh, melted. Uh, and also uh, the downgoing plate also some uh, to some extent uh, some co uh, contribution is there so this uh, dumps some uh, huge lumps of uh, magma on the ocean floor and uh, close to a continental margin you can see some island arc uh, generation right so these are called island arcs this type of uh, uh, magmatic material uh, later crystallized into uh, island arcs. We call them island arcs because this this uh, region uh, we term as uh, arc island. Uh, sorry, subduction arc setting. Okay, so it is called an arc. So therefore, the 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 new crust generated arc uh, is called uh, island arcs. So the good example is Japanese islands. So you can see the Japanese islands. Uh, there are three islands mainly Hokkaido. Uh, Honshu and then uh, Kyushu downwards, three main islands. So they are uh, generated like this, okay? Uh, downgoing uh, Pacific plate and uh, the other side is uh, Eurasian plate, right? Continental plate and oceanic plate. So Japanese islands are uh, uh, formed in that way. So uh, <clears throat> uh, ocean, ocean plate collision and ocean, uh, uh, then uh, the next one is the continent ocean uh, plate collision and also continent continent collision so those are the three uh, things and uh, in this case uh, i can show you i, I think uh, you can remember we uh, we saw uh, the andes mountains uh, they are <clears throat> uh, one oceanic plate uh, oceanic plate uh, is colliding uh, with the uh, continental plate so in the previous example we we had uh, both oceanic plates, right? Here, one oceanic plate, and the other one is here, okay? Which is definitely connected with continental uh, continental plate, but uh, at the end of the subduction only, this continental plate, plate will come up into this far, right? Otherwise, it is uh, uh, located uh, far away, right? But in this case, the oceanic plate is very close to the continental plate, uh, so that they can they can make uh, the collision uh, <clears throat> happen uh, in this situation also 
So this place again, there is an arc, uh, arc setting we call uh, technic, uh, sorry, tectonic setting, arc tectonic setting. Uh, so this area is uh, characterized by again magmatism, right? So you can see a lot of magma is generated and this magma uh, makes volcanoes because it is uh, directly related with the continent, okay? So this continental part uh, entirely melts uh, very uh, immediate close to this uh, subducting place uh, here, for example, uh, it will generate a very different magma, which is, I mean, uh, chemically different uh, from this magma, right? Here, just the lithospheric part mainly contributes plus a little amount of oceanic, uh, oceanic part, okay? So therefore, the magmatic composition is uh, entirely different because you can remember uh, the, the compositions of oceanic, uh, oceanic crust and lithosphere uh, is different from uh, just the ent uh, entire continental crustal con composition, right? Because of that, uh, <clears throat> there can be uh, chemical changes, uh, geochemical changes in magma. So we can analyze them later in the lab. And I mean, uh, we can collect the samples of rock samples and then analyze geochemically and find out uh, their differences also. Uh, <clears throat> always uh, this subduction causes uh, dehydration, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> dehydration and uh, it causes melting. Uh, this melting is uh, again uh, resulted by uh, the friction. Okay, frictional forces. <clears throat> so Andes Mountains uh, is a good example for that. It's a good example for that. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think you uh, you can uh, you can uh, sketch down if you haven't done it. Uh, just give me just a few minutes. I, I will come back. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption. So we'll continue from there. What's happening? Still you can see the slides, right? I can't move. Okay, right. 
uh, then uh, continental continental collision we mentioned about the himalayan example right so this is uh, the himalayan <coughs> uh, tectonic setting there you can see entirely continental plate and another continental plate is colliding right so still we term this as an arc setting but uh, particularly in this case uh, the, uh, we, 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 we term as this is a uh, continental arc setting right in the previous cases uh, it's arc yeah that's correct but uh, sometimes it's used as oceanic arc because uh, one oceanic plate is uh, involved at least one oceanic plate, in, plate is involved right therefore so this is entirely a continental arc setting so and uh, there are uh, there are uh, mountain belt uh, formed uh, like here because uh, there is maximum compression uh, around this region right maximum co compression uh, is uh, uh, initiated there and continues uh, as long as this uh, collision is uh, stopped right so in the previous cases uh, we also uh, experienced some uh, <clears throat> some magma generation and uh, due to this magma generation we had uh, some island arcs and then uh, we had uh, again a mountain like feature so this is uh, and this mountain it's a uh, orogenic feature we call it orogenic feature and uh, here also the similar type uh, but on, only difference is uh, the contribution from both sides is a uh, is a uh, continental uh, sections and uh, also remember and unlike in the oceanic uh, arc situations uh, this plate will not subduct uh, uh, into the very deep interior because both are continental plates and uh, beneath this you know uh, there is a lithosphere right so within the lithosphere it's very hard uh, i mean uh, this lithosphere it's very hard to sink uh, beneath the continent unlike in a oceanic setting like here because this has a heavy density so it uh, naturally pulls uh, in this direction so that it can go uh, deeper into the uh, mantle but uh, in the continental situation it's very hard so that means there is a uh, kind of a uh, very uh, friction or very high friction or a barrier here so that it makes this plate to be uh, more and more folded and compressed so that's why uh, we have very uh, large mountains and very high mountains uh, generate in this area due to heavy compression uh, exerted in uh, this uh, exact uh, marginal area in this area okay so there is uh, <clears throat> some barrier here so from there onwards it's very hard for this plate to move into uh, instead what happens is uh, it's getting bended like here right so it creates a lot of folds we call folds uh, in geology <clears throat> folds you know folds you can uh, just uh, uh, bend something so right uh, generating a fold right so uh, bending of rock layers we call folds right so that uh, that type of uh, <clears throat> features uh, happen and also there is another one uh, which we call folds okay so fault, fault means what? Fault, uh, you spell it as F-A-U-L-T, a normal fault, I mean, uh, the fault, uh, <clears throat> the general term, but uh, geological term, uh, meaning is different, fault. Okay, let me show you. In this case, what happens? Uh, in the previous case, in the fault situation, F-O-L-D, fault uh, situation, what happens is, uh, <clears throat> where can I draw? Okay, uh, let's say here, so you have one rock layer and due to this tectonic pressure, uh, this layer will be bended, right? It will be bending like this. So uh, you, you have some three dimensional features like this, right? Even uh, inside here, it, uh, this happens, right? So at the same time, some mountains uh, form. So these mountains are also accompanied uh, some folding features. But folds mean, uh, you have uh, layers, rock layers like these. For example, you just take uh, two rock layers. <clears throat> uh, yeah, two rock layers like this. In weak zones, uh, due to this compression, there can be some 
uh, weak uh, surfaces uh, produced in the uh, in these areas right in this within these rock layers so in such layers uh, such uh, weak zones what happens is one uh, one rock layer tends to move relative to the other right depending on the pressure uh, applying direction right force applying direction so this one may be going this way and the other one is going that way so finally what happens this will produce uh, something like <clears throat> some dis, uh, displaced configuration one layer is here and the other layer is there right so in between there is uh, something called fall gouge that means some uh, uh, some distorted uh, <clears throat> rock layer some powdered rocks or fractured rocks or something like that but anyway the two layers have now this uh, displaced some uh, maybe uh, this distance uh, maybe some <clears throat> at least some meter scale right it can be more than i mean some hundreds of meters can also be right it depends uh, so anyway these rock layers uh, two rock layers uh, will break first like here uh, they will uh, be subjected to break uh, breaking or fracturing and then uh, due to that weak zone appearing here uh, they will get uh, displaced like this like that. so such uh, such uh, <clears throat> uh, such tectonic uh, features also appears in uh, continental continental collision zones particularly uh, where uh, different rock layers are uh, compressed uh, towards each other okay so this is the compression uh, so you you can uh, see this compression happening in both directions uh, so that uh, folding and faulting both can take place so this is uh, some example of uh, some folds happened uh, and uh, this sketch shows uh, some displaced uh, fragments of uh, folds so the other 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 fragment of this fold will be will be, i mean uh, you, you sometimes you can't re relocate it it may have gone with this uh, subduction plate O, uh, probably it may have gone up like here and uh, now we can't see it uh, due to erosion right some time ago some millions of years ago this may have happened so we don't see it now because it this part has already gone i mean uh, eroded eroded then away so now we don't see that uh, section but in the deep part you may see both uh, segments like here uh, at the deep, uh, deep relatively deeper parts uh, you may see both uh, segments of this uh, fault okay so this is happening continuously and finally uh, this uh, thrusting will continue to act uh, rising the uh, area uh, as uh, mountains so or even uh, himalayas you can uh, you can you, i think you are aware that uh, it's uh, still rising even in this particular time present day also it's uh, rising some uh, millimeter scale in millimeter scale but previously it was rising in a rapid state uh, scale but now uh, the speed is uh, uh, reduced due to uh, the it has reached the maximum compression so you can't uh, you can't expect more uh, more compression because uh, it has uh, i mean uh, over a like 100 or oh, at least uh, more than 50 million years time uh, this compression has been uh, ha happening there uh, so uh, this has now come to the maximum uh, compression uh, levels right so no more uh, compression is possible so that's why we are expecting uh, very very strong earthquakes uh, in the near future in this uh, in this area right this area will be subjected to very uh, strong earthquakes in the near future uh, so that it's a very uh, very risk for uh, the surrounding countries like uh, nepal tibet uh, india and even sri lanka okay so this is the situation there now uh, at the continent continent collision okay so i think i explained it before so this is happening continuously uh, or uh, at least uh, for example here you can see uh, 50 million years and then 10 million years ago and this is the present day situation right so at least uh, like 60 70 million years uh, 
this thrusting is happening uh, very uh, very rapidly but now uh, the the rate is now uh, decreased so this, these are the all mountains uh, formed due to this tectonic uh, scenario okay at different uh, height levels and also uh, we can't compare actually the heights because uh, some of the mountains are eroded away uh, so that we don't see uh, uh, the, the sections as i mentioned before uh, some areas like here may be uh, eroded away on the surface okay uh, so those were the convergent uh, boundaries con convergent plate boundaries and uh, the other one is the divergent boundaries uh, so we took the example of uh, Iceland and there you see uh, two plates are moving away from each other. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, a new a new split is appearing. Uh, so you, you see the middle Atlantic ridge here because when the plates are moving away uh, from each other, uh, some kind of vacuum area is uh, generated and through that a new magma uh, comes up right from the mantle because this part is the mantle right so this magma dumps uh, material here in this region and uh, produce uh, kind of uh, a mountain ridge okay like uh, the mountains we have here similar mountains are available in the ocean floor also these are called mid ocean ridges okay unfortunately uh, the country iceland uh, is exactly uh, in between. I mean, uh, the 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 Atlantic Ridge runs in the middle of the from the within the middle of the country. Uh, so you can see uh, frequent volcanism uh, happening there. Right? Nobody can live in close by regions. Only uh, the areas away from this ridge, uh, people can live. Okay. Right. Okay, so these are the uh, places uh, where we uh, mentioned about uh, the as the places where volcanoes are formed. Uh, always remember, uh, for volcanoes to be formed, subduction, rifting, and hotspots are the general tectonic settings. So you have different types of subduction we discussed already, and then we have rifting. Right, uh, rifting includes uh, mid-ocean ridges like uh, the divergent boundaries, and also uh, they can include continental rifting zones like uh, uh, interior of the within the continents also. Okay, so these are uh, the magma generation points, and also we have the hotspots. Uh, you know, hotspots are the results of a very deep uh, magma, which is coming from even uh, the core mantle boundary. The normal magma which we uh, talk about is shallow magma. The normal eruptions. Uh, like uh, in this uh, depth, we have that shallow uh, magma <coughs> generation, right? Uh, it's uh, shallow, right? Maybe maximum like uh, 80 kilometers, right, from the surface. But the hotspots are coming from very deep, right? They are very deep. They go up to uh, even uh, the core mantle boundary. It's like uh, 2,800 kilometers deep, right? Uh, so it takes very very long time so that's why for supercontinent uh, the dispersal of supercontinents or amalgamation of supercontinents uh, I, we will uh, talk a little details on that today uh, it takes about uh, 300 to 400 million years uh, time right so in one scene uh, 200, uh, 300 to 400 billion years time there will be a hotspot so that it means uh, it takes about 400, 300 to 400 millions to reach that magma from the core mantle boundary to the surface. Okay, so you can uh, you can calculate the uh, velocity of that magma. Okay, and also that magma being coming from very very deep, it's very hot. It's very very hot. Unlike uh, the shallow magma, this shallow magma is also hot. We know that at least thousand degrees Celsius. But these ones may be 3000 degrees Celsius. But of course, when it comes to the shallow levels, uh, the temperature drops, but uh, still uh, much hotter than the 
a shallow ma magma available in the normal volcanoes that we observe on the surface or in the ocean floor. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, this hotspot uh, magmatism causes uh, uh, again uh, some feature called oceanic islands, oceanic islands, but uh, it's different from the normal island arcs that we have here. So these island arcs are generated from uh, shallow magma uh, due to frictional heating as we uh, just uh, saw a uh, few slides ago. Okay, But these uh, oceanic islands or uh, shield volcanoes, we call uh, the submarine shield volcanoes, they are formed uh, due to uh, hotspot magnetism, right? Uh, something like Hawaii. Hawaii is one of the examples uh, we have in the recent past formed by a uh, mental ho hotspot, right? Okay. Right. So, hotspot volcanoes, uh, the Hawaiian island is the <coughs> uh, example. It's also formed as an island chain because, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, normal volcanic arc, also you can see some chain, chain of islands. So, that's why Japanese islands are located as a chain, three islands, three big islands. But some islands are very tiny uh, and it continues in some places, right? So, but uh, these ones uh, <clears throat> still can possible uh, to form some chains of islands, okay? Okay, so the Pacific plate, which ha has the most number of uh, volcanoes uh, available, uh, including uh, all submarine volcanoes, like uh, the ones you see here, except for few uh, very close by volcanoes, right? Uh, so this is called uh, uh, ring of fire, okay? This is called ring of fire, and you can see in the middle of the plate, a uh, hotspot volcano is there, that is uh, uh, some uh, Hawaiian volcanoes. Uh, because uh, this was, I mean, uh, it's kind of a, century, uh, inti a central part of the uh, previous uh, supercontinent configuration. So there, the hotspot hit uh, in around this area, okay, in the previous uh, situation. Usually these hotspots affect much on triple junctions. Triple junctions means some places like here. Right? This is a tiny place, but a large uh, continental triple uh, sorry, a large uh, plate triple junctions are there. That we are three plates are meeting together. Right? These places are weak, so therefore the uh, heavy uh, magmatic flow coming from the deep interior as a mantle plume hits uh, easily. I mean, uh, hits the uh, continent. I mean, the supercontinent. Uh, because uh, there should be supercontinental configuration like this. Uh, it hits the supercontinent, but breaking happens from the uh, triple junction because it's the most weak, most weaker, uh, or the weakest uh, region uh, within the uh, continents. I mean, supercontinent, right? So uh, everything comes up uh, from their own roots, right? So previously, uh, this location uh, was the weak place. Uh, which uh, produce this uh, <coughs> hotspot volcanism and Hawaiian islands nowadays, as we see. Uh, so all these uh, yellow spots in this map indicate active volcanoes in the world, right? Active volcanoes means even person day, uh, they are active, right? Uh, some volcanoes are called dormant volcanoes, dormant, D-O-R-M-A-N-T, dormant. Dormant means previously existed, I mean, active ones, but uh, in the recent past, there is no uh, eruption. For example, Mount Fuji, for the time being, is dormant. But actually, it is, uh, the seismologists have found that uh, it's not dormant because, uh, you know, in all, all the volcanoes are monitored by uh, seismologic equipment that means uh, some uh, you know uh, sound wave detection uh, if uh, interior is vigorous or interior is uh, moving or colliding somehow uh, like uh, in uh, for example if uh, something is happening in this region by magma flow or plate motion you can feel it on the surface 
uh, in terms of uh, sound waves, right? So it's like the earthquake uh, detection, right? The same uh, mechanism and same instruments uh, that can be set up uh, around the volcanoes and uh, they are constantly monitored uh, three, uh, 24 hours, 365 days, right? Every time they monitor for any danger, right? So uh, the Mount Fuji in Japan uh, is still active. Although it did not erupt in the recent past, uh, it's, a, it's an active volcano. Okay, anytime it can explode from in the in the near future, right? But some volcanoes are there; they are uh, entirely dormant. Uh, they don't produce any uh, any seismic uh, waves, uh, <clears throat> so we can call them dormant volcanoes, right? But uh, these yellow spots are uh, active volcanoes available around the world. Uh, <clears throat> so there are many volcanoes you can see it surrounding the plate boundary. So you see the plate boundary, even you can trace the plate boundary by the volcanoes, right? This is Pacific plate I'm tracing now. At least uh, roughly you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, trace the Pacific plate. I mean, not the Pacific plate, any plate, you can trace if uh, those volcanoes are available. So see this and this, this is the traced one. And this one is the marked one in the map. Right? These are passive, uh, this is passive plate. So it's easy uh, to see, uh, to monitor the seismic, uh, seismic records. And uh, we can use those signals to uh, map uh, the tectonic plates also. It's a good mechanism as well. Okay, so that is the revision that actually uh, we, uh, on the content that we had, uh, uh, done uh, some time ago. Uh, so <clears throat> today uh, I want to move to another section uh, that's uh, related with uh, again, uh, I mean the same uh, same uh, same topic. Uh, but uh, we will talk in detail about a little bit about uh, the supercontinents and uh, the evolution of supercontinents in the uh, Earth's history. Okay. So please uh, input your uh, input your names in the chat box to uh, mark the regi uh, register. <clears throat> so I will stop this share for the time being, and then I will share another one. Uh, do you see this uh, supercontinent slide? Can you see clearly this supercontinent slide? Yes. Okay. So please put your na names in the chat box. Uh, still, you didn't get any numbers from the PGIs, registration numbers? Not yet, sir. Okay, but you uh, finished the registration process, right? Have you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's uh, talk about the supercontinents. Actually, the definition of a supercontinent is at least 80% of the total mass of the planet should be uh, accumulated in one area, okay? So, you know, continents are very big land masses, right? So in that case, uh, supercontinents are collections of land masses. Actually, these are like uh, pieces of uh, jigsaw puzzle, right? So uh, pieces of continents will, uh, will uh, combine each other uh, to each other and make a bigger continent. Right, so that is what we call the supercontinent. So some oceans, uh, at least one ocean can be there, while all the uh, other continental part is accumulated in one re uh, one uh, one uh, one to one single mass. Right, so that is a requirement. At least eighty percent of the land mass should be uh, together. Okay, so there can be some uh, some. Uh, 
small small land masses around but uh, the majority should be together to call it a supercontinent so in the past uh, so i think uh, you will learn about the geological time scale uh, separately so this is the time of the earth's formation 4.56 billion years ago uh, so that uh, early early period uh, we call he hedain time hedain time right this is it and then uh, after 3.8 billion years time right uh, we call uh, archean time then after 2.5 billion years uh, time we call uh, proterozoic time so this is the oldest and uh, it's evolving up to the present day so present day is actually 0 million years right 0 million years is the present day today <clears throat> uh, but uh, in this uh, diagram we have up to 540 uh, ma uh, because uh, the the facts that we are talking about is uh, limited to 540 ma because after that uh, there has been no big uh, very big tecton tectonic events although there has been one but it did not affect much to our uh, rock record okay therefore still we have the rock record well preserved which was uh, generated at about 550 million years ago right so therefore we don't have many uh, things to discuss in between this time uh, period but there are so many things to discuss uh, for the period of uh, this uh, long period okay so since uh, the 4.6 billion years time that is the formation of the earth and uh, then <clears throat> we have zircons from australia uh, and also from canada to determine the earliest uh, age of the earth actually the australian zircons uh, come uh, in uh, the time frame somewhere here and uh, then uh, the oldest known crustal rocks uh, we had previously uh, from canada that is uh, about 3.9 billion years right uh, so during this period during this uh, long period from uh, from 4.6 to like 3.8 there has been meteoritic or uh, chondrite uh, uh, bombardments yet happening uh, uh, in the earth actually uh, you know uh, the 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 fragments uh, the the asteroid or uh, meteoroid or whatever the chondrite or the planetary materials that contributed to form the uh, solar system were uh, still uh, surrounding and uh, circulating uh, around the planets different planets right even uh, our <clears throat> planet was hit by many such uh, fragments uh, which is uh, freely moving in the space right so you know already about uh, the asteroid belt and meteoritic belt like there uh, there are so many uh, fragments uh, remained after this uh, earth's uh, for accretion time uh, solar system formation uh, time right so these are still there uh, for example the our moon is one of the fragments which was uh, thrown away uh, by <coughs> colliding with the earth with a big asteroid uh, so likewise uh, still there are so many collisions taking place even now in the present day uh, we experience some very close collisions uh, in the past i mean uh, it did not collide with the earth luckily if that collided our entire earth might be uh, destroyed right but uh, small small fragments are colliding with us including meteorites you can see in the night sky uh, they are uh, coming towards the Earth's surface uh, because of uh, the Earth's gravity, gravitational field. So anyway, most of these major bombardments, most of, most of these major collisions were finished by the time of uh, 3.8 billion years, that is the Hedain uh, time. So this Hedain time was very, very dangerous time. There are always some collision uh, of these uh, planetary materials were there. Uh, so that a uh, lot of fire and a lot of magma uh, melting uh, was happening uh, during that uh, time. At the same time, the Earth was uh, evolving. Uh, you can remember the differentiation of the Earth, which started from uh, this time towards this uh, this uh, this time period. Uh, so 
co-separation happened somewhere here just after 100 million years time after the accretion and then uh, mantle differentiated lower mantle upper mantle and then crust appeared right uh, crust appeared continental crust appeared uh, at least uh, at about 3.8 billion years time right so soon after the end of bombardment uh, our earth was also evolved uh, initiating the crust formation right so we had the bulk silicate earth until this time uh, the only the core and the uh, 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 the remaining uh, part of uh, the silicate portion as the mantle, uh, which we term as bulk silicate earth, because the core contains only the metallic elements like nickel and iron. Uh, all the remaining silicate portion was available as the bulk silicate earth. Right? From that, the crust uh, derivation started at about 3.8 billion years time. And then uh, gradually, uh, this crustal production uh, made converted uh, into uh, the greenstone belts uh, that is a, a very greenish uh, rock very old rock type uh, which was available in, in the planet uh, some time ago even now uh, we can see some remnants of such rocks in uh, some major continents uh, like uh, in Africa uh, Australia and even India I think uh, there are some uh, very minor uh, remnants of greenstones uh, this is uh, not very common now because all these greenstone crust formed as a result of early crust formed uh, of the earth uh, have been subducted into the mantle back. Uh, how they subducted in the uh, collision uh, in the subducting subduction zones uh, because uh, the as soon as the crust produ produced uh, these crustal movements happen. The plate tectonics started from there onwards from here onwards. So the tectonics means uh, subduction, collision like uh, features, right? So you, you learned it, divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, all these things are plate tectonics, okay? So you saw some uh, oceanic crust moving down into the deep mantle. So then it disappears. Some crustal materials also goes uh, together and disappear. So even greenstone bells, uh, early crust formed, uh, was also disappeared uh, gradually with time. Uh, when it comes to uh, younger ages due to these plate tectonic uh, processes. So remember, uh, we believe the plate tectonics uh, may have started uh, at a time uh, like 3.8 billion years uh, time, like here, right? So this is uh, time of initiation of plate tectonics. That is uh, uh, based on uh, some uh, <coughs> petrological uh, and uh, geochemical evidence okay so then gradually uh, this uh, process processes uh, uh, caused uh, uh, tiny continents to form so these were the early continents produced so we call them proto continents okay so very early uh, continents uh, we call uh, proto continents including these greenstone beds okay greenstone beds are uh, early earliest type of crust formed in the earth right composed of uh, i mean uh, mainly we call them proto continents and then micro continents uh, uh, form and gradually these uh, continents for small small fragments they uh, came towards each other because of this plate tectonics uh, initiation of plate tectonics and uh, they collided and they uh, they formed more and more bigger continents like this, right? Gradually they formed. So they uh, formed uh, something called earliest cratons. So they formed uh, very large, they grew, uh, they grew into large continents gradually with these uh, pieces of uh, uh, these uh, proto continents, right? So this uh, large, uh, large, uh, early large masses of crusts are called. Uh, uh, the cratons, cratons we call them. Okay, so these uh, parts of these are also available in many parts of the world now, including our country. Okay, including Sri Lanka. Right? Sri Lanka is also a part of a early craton. Actually, uh, it is a Proterozoic uh, cr uh, craton, akin to Proterozoic craton. Uh, we are we are standing on now. Right, uh, maybe formed in this in a region like time region like here right transitional time 
from archaean to proterozoic okay so india is a, again part of a, uh, a early craton africa uh, south africa uh, australia like a big uh, continents are there uh, they are part of uh, these uh, cratons why we call uh, them cratons is now nowadays in the present case uh, there is no uh, movements of these cratons we are stable right we don't have earthquakes we don't have uh, volcanoes right so uh, we are still uh, uh, in a, a very uh, robust uh, configuration uh, so that our uh, route to our continents are very very strong right the route uh, to fix our continent uh, something should fix this continent right so this is uh, this bonding is very very still strong so therefore uh, such areas we call craton cratons cratonic areas which is absent uh, absent from uh, tectonic activities tectonic activities means uh, uh, earthquakes or volcanoes or movements collisions like uh, like those so earliest cratons were formed and then gradually they evolved uh, <clears throat> they evolved and uh, in the proterozoic times in the proterozoic time here uh, there is uh, actually uh, three uh, three uh, domains in the proterozoic we call early proterozoic uh, middle proterozoic and late proterozoic actually this uh, proterozoic period you can see uh, starts from 2.5 billion years and extends up to 550 million years so that means 2000 like uh, this time frame is about 2000 uh, million years right so a very very long period right so therefore it's divided into three sections early middle and late right so corresponding to each of these uh, <clears throat> uh, periods uh, or uh, the, uh, the intervals uh, there are uh, some characteristic uh, activities tectonic activities or events uh, you can see as geological events there uh, growth of uh, Lorenz, uh, Laurentia it's a very big uh, continental uh, fragment okay uh, it's a actually it's a, a part of a supercontinent because uh, it's a very, very large continental mass, right? Uh, so they uh, collided and uh, made some mountain belts, right? It is uh, called an orogeny. Uh, so this is the Wapne orogeny. That means it's a name of that orogeny, a big mountain uh, uh, forming uh, process. And then gradually this uh, big uh, supercontinent uh, was growing uh, called uh, uh, Laurentia. Uh, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> actually, it, this Laurentia is a part of a very big uh, supercontinent, uh, which uh, started to grow uh, at uh, this age, uh, exactly somewhere here, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere here, uh, it contributed to forms uh, the first uh, supercontinent, the biggest supercontinent, uh, which is called Colombia, right? So completion of this Colombia supercontinent happened uh, in, within the time frame of uh, 1800 uh, million years time and it exists existed up to 1500 million years right so it existed uh, until 1500 million years that means it existed uh, up to uh, from for example from here to here like okay up to this uh, up to this uh, time frame right and then this uh, supercontinent was hit by a mantle plume, right? This was hit by a mantle plume uh, by the time of like uh, 1100 MA, close to that period. And uh, this is uh, what we refer as Granville orogeny, right? Granville orogeny. Uh, it, it was the time of breaking of this Columbia supercontinent because supercontinents form by accumulation of uh, small, small continents like uh, Loren uh, Laurentia is one, one of uh, uh, such uh, so, uh, part of that uh, Columbia, uh, which was uh, contributed by small, small fragments like this. And they, uh, they, uh, they form together uh, and grow into a very big supercontinent like this, right? So Columbia is such one of such supercontinents, which was the first supercontinent to appear in the world, right? And then, uh, at about uh, nearly uh, 1100 million years time, uh, 
actually before 1100 million years time that means uh, even starting from here right starting from uh, soon after its formation after 1500 million years then it uh, gradually started to break due to a uh, heavy mantle plume came up from the uh, uh, core mantle boundary and it hit uh, uh, the supercontinent and broke into pieces like this right it broke uh, into pieces right so these uh, these pieces uh, were moving here and there and colliding with each other and making uh, new mountain belts uh, uh, which uh, was uh, one uh, very a popular mountain belt called Grand Milorochini. This uh, was very much uh, uh, witnessed in Can uh, Canadian uh, North uh, North North America and Canadian regions, uh, and also in other parts. Because the, don't think of the map global map as what you see today. It was not like that in this uh, ancient times. Okay, Canada, Antarctica, India, everything was together, right? So this orogeny, uh, the remnants of this orogeny, even today is uh, observed in Canada mainly and uh, some parts of Europe. And also even in Sri Lanka, we find some parts of uh, this orogeny uh, available in, uh, in especially in areas like, uh, uh, you know, in Kandy, there is an area called Hirasagala. Uh, there are uh, some rock layers uh, <clears throat> in uh, observed in rock quarries. Uh, we can find some evidence for this uh, granular orogeny, especially in terms of zircon uh, dating. Uh, we can find uh, the similar ages and uh, similar zircons found uh, uh, with respect to this uh, orogenic event. So therefore, we believe our our crustal fragments were also part of there at that time, and uh, now. Uh, most of the evidence is deleted because of uh, later or subsequent tectonic events, which were more stronger than the previous ones. So only few uh, remnants can be found. Okay, so that made a new supercontinent, which we call Rodinia. So that is the second one. The first one is Colombia, this one, and then uh, the second one appeared. Uh, Rodinia that was uh, in existence by the time of 1100 mu. So that means uh, by 1100 uh, million years, that means after 1500 mu, Colombia was uh, hit by a mantle plume and uh, from 1000, say 1400 to 1100 uh, time period was that uh, amalgamation time of uh, Rodinia, the, the, the supercontinent was in making. So then uh, two supercontinents uh, now appeared uh, according to this explanation. So first is the Colombia and then Rodinia, right? So after the Rodinia, I mean, uh, Rodinia uh, existed until about 700 MA, right? After that, uh, during the time of uh, 700 to 500 million years time, uh, this Rodinia was broken, again hit by a mantle plume, uh, like in the previous case. Uh, and uh, it was uh, dispersed and dispersed means uh, broken into pieces, right? So all these pieces are floating uh, in our existing oceans at that time and uh, they subduct, uh, collide and uh, many tectonic processes are happening there, appearing, disappearing, uh, some uh, disappearing existing oceans and appearing new oceans like I explained uh, in the last time. Uh, this was continuing and uh, uh, later on, at about 500 million, 550 million, 500 to 600 million years time, uh, the Gondwana uh, supercontinent was formed. Actually, Gondwana uh, was a uh, uh, Gondwana was a huge uh, supercontinent, uh, which was accompanied by another supercontinent called Laurentia. So, Laurentia and Gondwana both were together, right? But uh, our attention mostly goes to Gondwana because uh, mo most of the evidence of uh, rock record is available with the Gondwana uh, times. So, I mean, uh, belonging to the Gondwana fragments. So, therefore, uh, we believe that uh, with respect to the Laurentia, uh, Gondwana is uh, much more bigger. So, anyway, uh, there may have been a relatively bigger supercontinent also. Uh, like this plus Gondwana. Suppose this is Gondwana, this brown one, and this may be the uh, Laurentia, like that. Okay, right. 
So that was the third supercontinent appeared uh, in the global history. Uh, so you can uh, you can imagine uh, the time frames. You can see the time frames from 1800 to 1500. That is about 300 uh, million years. To say exactly, it might be 300 to 400 million years. And then next, 1100 to 700, that is Rodinia. And then uh, there should be uh, another supercontinent from uh, <clears throat> uh, 500 to 300, it appeared ex in existence, but this, uh, the, the, the formation process has started soon after 700 million. So then 700, 300 means another 400 million years. Okay. So then going for Gondwana also, it's 400. For Rodinia also 400 and uh, Colombia also 300 to 400. So that's why we say that every 300 to 400 million years, uh, 300 to 400 million years, uh, there, there should be a supercontinent, right? So after this Gondwana, what happens? Uh, what happened was about 300 million years time, uh, this Gondwana was again uh, splitted due to a heat of a mantle plume, right? So that uh, made pieces of uh, Gondwana and uh, uh, then, then uh, assembled into a new supercontinent called Pangaea. So that is the last supercontinent we had. Uh, so you can see uh, now it has elapsed about uh, uh, 300 million years since the Gondwana split uh, to the present day, because 300 means from present, right? Present is 0 m. Now we are here, 0 m million years time. Right, so we say that uh, 300 to 400 million years are the time frame for supercontinent formation and uh, uh, dis dispersal and uh, again amalgamation into another supercontinent. So now we have passed 300 million years after Pangaea, uh, <clears throat> after Pangaea formation, like Gondwana breaking and then Pangaea form, and Pangaea existed up to 100, 150 million years time, uh, and then it dispersed, right? Now we are still under being dispersed. So you saw uh, the India uh, is moving, uh, Antarctica is moving in another direction, India is moving towards north direction, and he, uh, now it is already uh, at a maximum compression level in the uh, forming uh, Himalayas uh, at the Eurasian plate, right? So that is uh, how we have been uh, drifted. Uh, so in another one, uh, 200 million years time, right, there will be a new, uh, actually not another 200, maybe another 100 because uh, the Pangaea was appearing at about 250 million years ago. So that means from today uh, to the Pangaea time, it is 250 million years elapsed. elapsed. So uh, we have another, uh, uh, say, uh, just 50 or 100 million years to uh, satisfy this 300 to 400 million years time interval for the next supercontinent to appear. Okay, so we are very close to another supercontinent, maybe in another 50 million years or 100 mil uh, maximum, maybe 100 million years time, right, from uh, the Pangaea dispersal time. So we are in the process now. So next supercontinent, actually, it is called Amasia. It's already named. It's uh, called Amasia. Uh, it is uh, on the way, right? We are we are in the process of making Amasia uh, by all these tectonic processes, right? So uh, <clears throat> that is how uh, this supercontinent cycle is uh, <clears throat> operating uh, in the planet. And uh, you can uh, you can clearly see this uh, bracketed uh, area here. This bracketed area is the most vigorous time in the planet Earth. Uh, that means after 2.5 billion years to uh, 550 or 500 million years time interval, like here, right? Because that was the main tectonic uh, events uh, the <clears throat> that was uh, taking place and also the peak of the plate tectonic processes. From there onwards, somehow the earth became very, very lethargic, right? So now you don't see very frequent uh, collisions, we, except for a few volcanic uh, eruptions uh, and some uh, earthquakes uh, here and there at plate margins. Apart from that, we don't see this type of very vigorous uh, collisions like uh, that happened uh, during this time frame. Okay, 
so pangea was also not very uh, active supercontinent although it existed only a very short period of time right only about 100 million years compared to the previous supercontinents so we don't uh, see very big uh, gorous tectonic activities within pangea that's why we still see uh, remnants of gondwana uh, tectonics uh, even uh, in our today's rocks right in today's rocks we don't see much pangea tectonic evidence except for a few locations in the world uh, but uh, we see a lot of uh, gondwana uh, related uh, uh, features okay so that's why we have similar rock types still uh, appearing in sri lanka india antarctica australia east africa uh, mozambique uh, like areas right because we were together at the gondwana time i will show you the map uh, world map of that time right in a short while later right so anyway uh, this is uh, this was uh, <clears throat> happening and we call assembly and breakup of uh, continent supercontinents assembly and breakup assembly means uh, the formation of that or amalgamation also is another term uh, from small pieces broken pieces uh, a new supercontinent is made up of so it's a like a jigsaw puzzle right pieces uh, can connect and make a bigger uh, continent and then breakup happens whenever a mantle plume hits this very large uh, supercontinent and then it breaks into pieces again they are drifted uh, uh, along the available oceans there and uh, then maybe at subduction zones they can disappear and new crust can form new oceanic arcs or island arcs can form as the crust new crust uh, likewise this uh, cyclic process is uh, taking place we call this uh, cyclic process uh, tectonic episodity okay tectonic episodity uh, is a term for this cyclic effect right so uh, <clears throat> this is uh, happening even today we can experience this tectonic episodity so that's why uh, we will expect another supercontinent in very uh, soon like uh, maybe in 100 million years time next from today <laughs> Okay, so this is how the major supercontinents uh, were appearing in the uh, planet Earth until today. So remember today's uh, a supercontinent that we are in, in, in the make uh, or we are in making is Amasia. We call it Amasia. M -A, uh, sorry, A-M-A-S-I-A, -A -A, Amasia. Right. Uh, do you have any questions until... Uh, now uh, especially with regard to this uh, content okay so let me show you some uh, constructed maps we call uh, these maps uh, paleogeographic reconstructions so this is the colombia supercontinent so actually at that time Colombia was uh, in existence at what time? During the period of 1.8 to 2.2 like, right? So you can remember uh, our time scale. Uh, maybe slight differences are there because uh, various researchers have, uh, uh, sorry, various uh, proposed different time scales. Just a minute, I'm getting some, yeah, still not. Okay, uh, so this is the time interval for Colombia, right? Uh, at that time, the world was looking like this, okay? So all these longitudes and latitudes are uh, not the current day, not the present day ones, right? At that time, right? So at that time, you can see uh, multiple subduction and accretion. Multiple subduction, accretion means uh, <clears throat> in subduction zones, what is happening here? This process, uh, we, we, we call deposition of sediments and then subduction of materials and uh, new magma formation. All these processes called accretion. Okay, so multiple such uh, scenarios were available, uh, particularly in places like here. This is an example, just one example. And here, uh, here, here, all these blue places. Okay, so these are multiple subduction zones. Occur, uh, happening at that time right so this was the world at that time all the continental uh, area 
was uh, concentrated there, right? Uh, and uh, one ocean was there, that ocean is uh, uh, Tethys Ocean, uh, that was uh, <clears throat> there at that time, okay? So this is the oldest supercontinent, uh, which is called Nuna. And Nuna is also uh, the same uh, continent, supercontinent uh, as Colombia, the same, same, another name for that Colombia supercontinent, okay? So it, then it started to fragment, uh, break away, uh, okay? So from zircon uh, age determination, uh, people could uh, find a gap in this age determination. So they think that this is the timing of uh, Columbia uh, rifting. Rifting means breaking. Okay. So zircon is a very good indicator for time uh, that can be used to uh, trace this type of uh, activities. Okay. So particularly this continental rifting, the breaking of this uh, supercontinent, uh, mainly composed of uh, the current or the present day America, Europe, North Asia, and South Africa. Those parts were the major components of this uh, Columbia supercontinent. We were also there, but uh, uh, ours, uh, our configuration is not very prominent in this, uh, in this uh, Rodinia, uh, sorry, in this uh, uh, Columbia uh, supercontinent configuration, right? So you can see these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, uh, different, different crustal fragments, which we can term today, uh, today's uh, today's uh, fragment, for example, North America that we find today was uh, here at that time in the Columbia time. Okay, so likewise uh, we can place our current day uh, places, current day continental areas uh, into this uh, puzzle, into this Columbia uh, supercontinent puzzle. Right. So then it was rifted uh, with heating a mantle plume and uh, was changing into the next supercontinent that was Rodinia, right? So Rodinia was like this and ours uh, <clears throat> was uh, just appearing. Uh, so you can see this uh, red, red color, red color areas. Those are mountain building uh, uh, regions that we referred as uh, <clears throat> the Granville Orogeny, right? Remember this one, Granville Orogeny. So that is uh, that uh, area. Okay, so ours also, our, our country should also be somewhere there. I can't exactly find it. Maybe uh, here related with that, right? Uh, so anyway, we were uh, showing <coughs> uh, some remnants of our uh, continental fragments as well. Okay, right. So this is the map or the world map at that time. That means about 900 million years ago, right? Uh, the Rodinia supercontinent, uh, uh, once it is, it was completed, okay? So this is how it looked like. And then uh, at about 700 million years time, the Rodinia started to break away uh, to make uh, the Gondwana to appear little by little, right? So Rodinia separated. So you see the whole continental fragments were together, but now you see uh, in between some spaces are there, right? So these spaces means new oceans appearing, right? New oceans appearing there. Uh, here you see uh, East Africa and India, Australia. Uh, so we were close by here. See the Sri Lanka, which is there. Okay, so this assembly of Rodinia completed between 1100 to 900 GA. Mm, and uh, so again, you can see some uh, age records. So when you have some peak like here, right? So that indicates amalgamation of a supercontinent. When you have a, uh, like a basin or, or trough like this, right? That means rifting uh, indicator. Rifting indicator means uh, hitting of a mantle plume and uh, uh, disappearing uh, some continents and then uh, some separate magnetism uh, generated. Uh, likewise, uh, these troughs, uh, indicate some rifting uh, timings, okay? Uh, so this is how uh, we date these, uh, these uh, tectonic events uh, in terms of uh, zircon geochronology, okay? The exact breakup of Rodinia is not well dated, but uh, uh, based on the available zircon data, it's termed as uh, 
this 800 to 700 million is. So this is the amalgamation time. This is the completion time of uh, Rodinia. And then it was uh, uh, breaking, uh, maybe the peak of the breaking time is 700 to 800 million years. So then uh, that's why it's uh, shown in this diagram, right? Uh, the breaking time, uh, almost the breaking time. And then uh, these pieces were drifting here and there and configured into a new shape. So that is the Gondwan. So from Rodinia, uh, it was uh, in the making, uh, all these fragments were moving here and there, uh, including some of these uh, Australia, uh, uh, East Antarctica, uh, Sri Lanka, India also somewhere here, and China, right? North China, South China, uh, Laurentia. Remember the Laurentia? Uh, I said uh, with the Gondwana, there was a bigger supercontinent. They already made. This is it, right? So the Gondwana was formed by amalgamation of these things, but by that time, the Laurentia was already formed. So anyway, uh, this is uh, existing, this was existing as two parts, right? Then uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, Rodinia uh, was uh, configured uh, to the new supercontinent Gondwana. In Gondwana also, uh, there was two seg uh, segments. Uh, one part was called East Gondwana and the other part was uh, West Gondwana, okay? Because you see here, uh, some uh, some continents were already amalgamated here, but some continents were not. Uh, I mean, they are they were not in close proximity also, right? So uh, West Gondwana and East Gondwana comprised these two different uh, fragments. Okay, so that's why we have two separate sections for the Gondwana as East Gondwana and West Gondwana. So this was the. Uh, uh, map by the time of about 550 million years. So that is the time of uh, uh, the Gondwana uh, formation, just after Rodinia breakup. So this is the map of Gondwana, the, the, the western part of the Gondwana and eastern part of the Gondwana was separated from this uh, line, uh, which we call the East African Orogeny or the Mozambique Belt, right? In this region, we have the Mozambique belt, something going uh, very large, very long mountainous belt, uh, particularly available in Africa, but uh, some parts were also uh, representing ours also because Sri Lanka is here. See, Sri Lanka is the central part of the Gondwana and India is here, Antarctica is here. So we were together. So that's why our gems, uh, your interest is gems. So you find same type of gems in Madagascar and uh, Tanzania, India, right? Because this is this is the collision zone. This is a mineralized belt, actually. This we call the Pan-African mineralized belt because this created very high temperatures. This collision, it's a very big collision. This is West Gondwana and this is East Gondwana. So this uh, collision was very, very, uh, uh, very strong that uh, made a huge heat uh, generated in this uh, area. So this uh, Mozambique belt, uh, region uh, was a very very favorable area for gem uh, gem formation even brazil you see the south america so this is also part of that brazil and uh, some east african countries right uh, so that's why uh, we have a mineralized belt there in the gondwan okay a lot of uh, precious gems are there so uh, this is the Gondwana uh, formation, uh, and then uh, what happened was uh, the next was Pangaea. But as I said, Pangaea was not uh, not a very active supercontinent, but it was broken uh, by the time of uh, 200 million years or 250 million years time. Uh, then uh, what happened was uh, the drif the drifting uh, continued uh, until today. So today we are in a configuration like this, uh, after Pangaea, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, we have the uh, the continental crustal and oceanic crustal distribution uh, in the present day uh, map. Right, this is the present day map. But if you see the ages of the rocks uh, distributed around the world, uh, the, all these different colors res, uh, represent different ages. Okay. 
so uh, sri lanka you see uh, india uh, these uh, areas contain this uh, red pink uh, rocks marked there so that means very old rocks we have right we are coming from very ancient times uh, so very new very young uh, areas like these areas uh, you can see in uh, this uh, bluish appearance okay those are newly generated areas right but uh, these uh, old uh, old areas you can see in red or pinkish appearance and uh, still they are very large right they are very large so therefore uh, they are robust also they do not uh, move away easily right uh, because their roots are uh, fixed to the uh, lithosphere very very uh, very uh, very uh, robustly right so that's why we call them cratonic area so I, I mentioned in the beginning the cratons are the ancient crustal terrains which are still available in the present day situation so all these are cratons including ours our our, our india and sri lanka is also craton australia is a craton south africa is a craton uh, this is uh, the himalayas or, or the eurasian area uh, that is also uh, craton right so they represent the oldest lithologies uh, in, the, uh, in the world. Okay, so we are here now. Uh, the Sri Lanka, sorry, uh, I have used uh, some other map there which has uh, located some sample localities uh, which I used for uh, another study. But uh, since uh, it indicates some rock names, I, I used that map for you to see. Uh, but before that, uh, our our location was here, uh, uh, which was uh, interior in the Gondwana, and now we are here in the present day map. Uh, our country is divided into one, two, three, four, four uh, lithotectonic means. We call lithotectonic. Litho means rock. Tectonic means uh, uh, the processes that happened in the past. So all these rocks were amalgamated or came together as a result of these uh, tectonic processes. That's why we call them lithotectonic. Uh, uh, units because they were uh, collided uh, during the time of Gondwana because Gondwana you remember East Gondwana and West Gondwana collided together right and formed the bigger continent right so Sri Lanka was also part of that but inside uh, we were residing there you can remember the location of Sri Lanka close to Madagascar uh, Antarctica and India Australia also right so these small small fragments uh, were collided so Sri Lanka was also formed like that uh, so tiny uh, collisions within this large big collision okay so it's like uh, you 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 just uh, imagine two houses right during an earthquake maybe two houses move to get uh, close to each other uh, maybe your neighbor is uh, neighbor's house is coming to your house right to collide right because of uh, the earth movement Right. But inside your, uh, there is a big collision. That is like East Gondwana and West Gondwana. Big two houses colliding. But uh, if you uh, think of the material you, that you have inside, like uh, tables, chairs, like things you, uh, <clears throat> suppose that they are uh, tiny crustal fragments. So they are also moving independently inside your house, right? They collide together each other within the house itself, right? While the large massive scale collision is happening, uh, inside also there are so many uh, collisions so likewise ours also uh, uh, collisions were happening so this one knee complex is one crustal fragment island complex was one another and vision complex was another one right so they were also colliding inside and uh, formed together right this is how the sri lanka was uh, formed so that's why actually we call them lithotectonic units because they were uh, amalgamated they were joined together as a result of these tectonic movements so, uh, Wani complex, Kaduganao complex, Highland complex, Vijayan complex, all these things were separately uh, moving and then finally they thrusted and they collided uh, <clears throat> to form the uh, final assembly of Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Okay, So, these crustal fragments, uh, either Wani complex or uh, Highland complex or Vijayan complex, are composed of different types of uh, rock uh, types, rock varieties. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm focusing only on Vijayan complex. There we can find charnokite, a rock named charnokite, and mafic gneiss. Nice. Gneiss nice is a rock type, right? 
it's a nice uh, it's one rock type you will learn about rocks uh, in a separate lecture and also you will do some practicals to identify rocks in the lab right so these all these different rocks you will uh, you will see uh, in practical classes okay all right right likewise there are so many uh, types of uh, rocks and in this uh, highland complex uh, you have uh, some other different types of rocks uh, of course chanokites are there uh, <clears throat> mafic gneisses are also there in addition you have uh, some uh, some rocks called condalite okay condalite means uh, some uh, we, we in in condalite you have a lot of aluminum rich minerals right for example sillimanite garnet uh, sapphirine uh, graphite carbon rich mineral graphite uh, like all these uh, different minerals are there which are mainly aluminum rich except for uh, graphite right but chanokite like uh, rocks contain uh, less aluminum rich rocks but they they are enriched in iron and magnesium like right so different compositions are there so it uh, it makes uh, their mineralogical differences also because of this uh, this uh, compositional differences okay actually aluminium rich uh, rocks are formed in uh, in accretionary regions like uh, uh, deposition of sediments uh, because they are mainly <coughs> sediments well, previously sediments now formed into rocks okay so this uh, we will learn about different types of uh, uh, rocks for uh, i can show you uh, the accretion the setting here so these are the places where sediments can deposit right all the sediments from continents coming uh, some uh, materials in the ocean uh, ocean basin now they are collected and like this for example uh, calcareous materials uh, the shells ocean uh, there are a lot of uh, the shells in the ocean right uh, so many uh, creatures which were available with uh, calcium carbonate shell so these uh, these creatures uh, when they die deposit on the ocean floor so they deposit as sedimentary layer calcareous sedimentary layer calcium rich sedimentary layer so they forms uh, some kind of a rock called sedimentary rock so for example limestone limestone is a calcium carbonate right so this is a sedimentary rock but later on these limestones uh, will go down uh, with the oceanic plate and uh, subject to higher temperature and pressure conditions uh, in the uh, interior and they convert into more robust type of a rock called marble right you know marble uh, which is available in mathale uh, particularly digana mathale areas right uh, even maligavila uh, or down south there are uh, marble right marble you know kirigaruni right that is uh, that is a very robust rock which was formed by a, a loose sedimentary rock called limestone in if you uh, if you go to putlam area uh, there you have a limestone not marble right it's a loose rock which is not very strong it is still sedimentary rock but marble is another type of a rock which we call metamorphic rock right because it has converted uh, due to pressure and temperature conditions at the earth's interior so we will learn about rock formation later on in a separate lecture and also we will see the differences in uh, their textures and all uh, in practical classes uh, and also you can see uh, some silica rich material depositing in these ocean flows right so these are also taken uh, down downwards by the subduction uh, plates and uh, they get uh, converted again and formed into a more robust rock right uh, what is uh, silica forms uh, in the ocean flow that is sandstone okay a rock called sandstone this is a sedimentary rock when it goes down into the uh, deep interior it converts into more robust uh, variety that is we call uh, quartzite right tiruvanage quartzite right etokota mehunugal marble marble is metamorphic variety but people uh, loosely use this uh, singleist term hunugal for both sedimentary limestone and also metamorphous limestone right marble or tat kiyanne hunugal kiyala me are very loose sediments with here in limestone ekata kiyanne hunugal kiyala jaffna also is composed entirely of limestone right not marble right so anyway uh, these uh, changes are there so this type of rocks mainly composed the highland complex actually more sedimentary uh, type of rocks are there in the highland complex whereas in the vijayan complex and vanni complex Uh, this type of uh, more igneous type of rocks are there right so rocks 
uh, can be of two types. We will learn later. Uh, but briefly, uh, sedimentary rocks and uh, igneous rocks, right? Then these two types of varieties can go uh, into more and more deep interior and convert into metamorphic rock, which is more and more robust. So metamorphic rocks can be uh, formed by either igneous rocks, which were uh, formed directly by magma, or by sedimentary rocks, which, which is uh, mainly due to sedimentation processes, right? So anyway, our all the rocks in Sri Lanka, all these Vanni complex, Highland complex, Vijayan complex, and Kaduganna complex, that means 90% of the uh, crustal uh, or the land area of Sri Lanka is underlain by metamorphic rocks, this rock, right? Metamorphic rocks, because all these rocks are converted into metamorphism. Only this uh, yellow, uh, sorry, this uh, bluish area uh, up to uh, Jaffna from this uh, Kalpitiya region, uh, tiny strip is made of uh, sedimentary rocks. Actually, these sedimentary rocks are very young. Very young means geologically young, but they are as old as uh, 30 million years or 50 million years, right? But these rocks, these 90% of rocks, at least 550 million years old, right? That is all, very old. Actually, they are uh, parent materials, they are protoliths. We call parent materials as protoliths. Uh, that means uh, the, the original materials, original sediments or original igneous materials, which contributed for these rocks to form, are maybe old, as old as uh, two point, more than 2.5 billion years, 2,500 million years old, right? So that's why we, we, we consider these as very young. This is just 50 million years, right? But these are as old as 2,500 million years. That's very old, okay? Uh, even the metamorphism has taken place at 550 million years due to collision of the Gondwana, right? This is 550 million years time. So this Gondwana collision caused all these uh, rocks to be metamorphosed. That's why we have a lot of gems in our metamorphic rocks, right? In our rocks, we have lot of gems because of this process, this high temperature process. We don't have diamond because we didn't, our rocks did not undergo high pressure conditions, only high temperature conditions, which prefer aluminum uh, concentration uh, forming uh, ruby, sapphire, uh, like uh, very precious gemstones. But uh, we don't have diamond because diamond needs high pressure conditions uh, of uh, carbon burial or carbon uh, sequestration uh, within the crust. But Africa has suffered uh, such uh, conditions uh, during the past, but not within this Gondwana collision before that. Okay, uh, so We will learn about these things in a separate lecture and also in a uh, practical class uh, regarding this uh, 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 different types of uh, rocks available, right? And also you will learn about the geology of Sri Lanka, uh, a separate lecture. Uh, in there also you will, uh, you, you will have the opportunity to uh, discuss in detail about the geological processes, uh, particularly uh, governing which govern the uh, amalgamation of our uh, these crustal units. Okay, I'm not going to detail them uh, right now. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the content that uh, I wanted to uh, discuss, but uh, actually, uh, since we have uh, still time about 20 minutes, uh, we can move to another uh, small section that uh, will introduce you in general about the rocks because uh, you know, uh, you are you are focusing on gems. Gems are uh, part of uh, the mineral family, uh, so minerals compose rocks. So therefore, you you need to know uh, the basic uh, concepts about the rocks. So I will introduce uh, uh, about rocks now uh, in brief. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe within twenty. I, I don't think I will take that much even. Uh, but uh, I will uh, move to that section because that will help you to 
uh, do some uh, practicals as soon as you come to the university. I think uh, very soon you will have to come to the university in weekends, uh, Saturday or Sunday, uh, depending on the timetable, uh, because other courses uh, have already uh, started fully uh, physically in the university. So therefore, uh, we will also uh, start some practicals as well. Uh, so that uh, you can join the practicals which is necessary uh, otherwise we cannot uh, proceed for the next course modules uh, without completing practicals of these uh, preliminary courses okay you are still doing the preliminary courses background courses for your gemology and industrial mineral course okay uh, let me uh, let me share then the other one uh, about the introduction of uh, introduction to the uh, to the rocks, uh, just a minute. I think you can see the new new slides now. Can you? Yes, sir. Okay. So I will take this as uh, the introduction to geology because uh, introduction to rocks means uh, the introduction to geology. So you can see very fascinating uh, landscape in uh, in the US uh, where you you can see very clear uh, we are uh, very clear. Uh, uh, layering of rocks and very this is a very beautiful scenarios these are happening all happening at the interior not on the surface okay so this is all geology geology is everything underlying the surface not on the surface on the surface what we uh, i mean people discuss is geography okay so all these scientific processes uh, and discussions are related with uh, geological aspects that is happening at the uh, in the interior of the earth okay Right, so building blocks of rocks are minerals. So we uh, we have uh, a kind of a def uh, definition. So actually, uh, this definition is very kind of a detailed definition. But now we, I mean, uh, here we I pre uh, present you a very very generalized definition. Minerals are natural compounds formed through geological processes. But actually, the real definition of mineral. Uh, is a combination of uh, inorganic substance uh, made from a natural process uh, with a specific uh, chemistry and a spe uh, fixed chemical composition right so all these aspects should uh, come into uh, the material substance that you are talking about if it is a mineral right for a mineral to be i mean for a substance to be called a mineral it should be of natural occurrence, right? It should be a, it should be occurring from a natural process, and then it should be uh, also uh, inorganic, and also there should be a fixed chemical composition, right? That is also a requirement for a mineral. So that is the real definition. But uh, in very general terms, you can uh, say that uh, it's a natural compound formed through a geological process, right? Uh, they are inorganic substance. Actually, uh, they do not contain contain carbon, right? But graphite is one exception. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you know, the graphite is not organic carbon. We are talking about it is inorganic carbon. So therefore, uh, you can take it into the definition of mineral. Uh, and also, it should have a crystalline structure. As I said, that means that it should have a nice shape, beautiful shape, right? That is the crystalline uh, structure. Different shapes, different crystals are there, right? That's why in uh, gemology also you are looking for uh, perfect crystals. Those are very expensive if you find. So if you go for a, a pegmatite or uh, crystallized pocket of minerals, 
there you can find very beautiful corundum or very beautiful quartz or topaz or whatever uh, in very nice shape but in a metamorphic rock uh, mostly you don't see i mean if you go to ratnapura and uh, mine and you don't find very beautiful crystal shaped ones but instead you see uh, very corroded ones i mean uh, the rounded shaped ones because those were formed from initially from metamorphic rocks and now transported and deposited in low lying uh, basins so during this transportation process all these edges all these beautiful crystal edges are worn away teared away teared off right so what you see now there is like rounded uh, pebble like uh, grains but in a pegmatite that means in a igneous rock uh, very slowly cooled igneous rocks like uh, if you go to buttala uh, you will find very beautiful uh, shaped uh, corundum like uh, this beautiful shaped uh, crystalline structure right Th these are found as pockets like uh, like this uh, you will see some clusters like very beautiful angular shaped very nice uh, crystals okay these are pockets uh, formed in different uh, settings okay anyway uh, so uh, the study of minerals we call mineralogy scientific study of minerals uh, is uh, gem mineralogy and scientific study of uh, gems uh, you can call it gemology right because uh, gems are one group of uh, minerals right for a substance to be called a gem uh, what do you need so basic uh, <clears throat> requirements are there if you want to call a mineral a gem because i said uh, there are about 3000 minerals in this world but we never call them all gems but only out of that uh, like 150 or 200 are uh, considered as gems why is that due to some specific uh, properties of them so how do you define a gem uh, i mean in terms of a uh, uh, mineral family if you want to separate out uh, uh, some of these uh, gems you need to have at least three uh, three factors i think you know them as uh, the people who are in the field can anybody tell me no why 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 the value is given for gems compared to other minerals quartz is quartz feldspar are not uh, valuable they you, you can't give a big price for them but for gems even semi precious or, or precious you can give a big price for them why because they are having the beauty beautiful right this is one one criteria uh, and then it should be uh, durable also right it should be durable otherwise uh, you can't uh, wear them in jewelries right it should be beauty uh, durability and also it needs uh, formation at uh, specific geological conditions formed at specific geological conditions that's why that's why they became uh, important minerals having this uh, robust uh, robust uh, characteristics okay right anyway uh, we will uh, discuss about these things later on also and uh, you see uh, various uh, types of crystals in different shapes some are perfect uh, crystals uh, see see here you you see what do you think this uh, this mineral can anybody tell me just a guess let's say this is a ruby should be a ruby i think this may be a garnet probably this i don't know maybe apatite so what do you think uh, this one this pink and greenish one together i think these are very famous in uh, gemology field tourmaline yes okay, correct it's a tourmaline but uh, you have a specific name also for that what 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 tourmaline there's a prefix for that watermelon tourmaline yeah watermelon tourmaline because of this uh, specific uh, uh, texture right and the color combination right so likewise uh, we have uh, very beautiful uh, gems uh, very beautiful minerals that we call gems 
right? Uh, when they when they are rare and beauty uh, beautiful and uh, durable, right? They should be rare also. I forgot to mention that at that time, right? It should be rare also. Otherwise, they they won't uh, have a high value. Okay, uh, so uh, you know uh, crystal habits. Uh, that means uh, the 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 nature of formation of these uh, different uh, crystals. So they will have different uh, different shapes. Uh, that is the crystalline feature, right? So some are cubes, some are uh, like uh, octahedra, some are like blades like that, hexagonal, tetragonal. Likewise, uh, rhombohedral. There are many types, uh, several types. At least uh, seven crystal systems are there. Uh, so they will have different uh, different uh, uh, shapes. So crystal structure is uh, very different for a mineral. Okay, that is uh, in other words, orderly arrangement of atoms. Right? We are talking about the uh, atoms. Right? Uh, the 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 atomic structure. Right? That makes the mineral uh, a, a unique uh, appearance. So being minerals are the building blocks of rocks, uh, we have different types of uh, rocks. So some rocks may be uh, having only one mineral. Some rocks have more than two minerals, right? So if uh, something is made up of uh, one mineral, we call it monocrystalline mineral, oh, sorry, mon monocrystalline rock, okay? If it is made of one uh, mineral. If it is made of uh, more than one mineral or at least two minerals, uh, we call it poly uh, polymineralic rock. So, uh, can anybody tell me uh, one uh, monomineralic rock? One monomineralic rock. We have already uh, talked about this some time ago, just a while ago, actually. One rock which is composed of only one mineral. Very simple. The mineral is also very simple. The rock is also very simple because of that. But uh, limestone, sir? Limestone? Yes, limestone, okay, correct. It's uh, made of what? What is the mineral? Limestone, and also you can take the marble also. This is a metamorphic variety of uh, limestone. Yes, that's correct. What is the mineral? Made uh, making limestone or marble, just one mineral only. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, but uh, that is the composition. The mineral name? Calcite. Calcite, yes. Calcite is a mineral, but actually uh, the natural uh, <clears throat> marble or limestone, uh, limestone is okay, uh, but the natural marble we find in the candy or Digana or Matale or these areas, which is used in the cement uh, industry also. Uh, now, I mean, uh, our ones contain uh, <clears throat> dolomite also, right? Not only calcite, uh, dolomite also is there. That is magnesium carbonate. Uh, that makes uh, a trouble for uh, particularly for the cement industry. Uh, but anyway, uh, the definition of uh, marble is just cal uh, calcite bearing uh, rock, okay, monominerally. The other one is the other uh, monomineralic rock, very popular rock. Anybody? You take that mineral for temple related some construction. What's it? You can find everywhere, every day. You are just uh, pushing them out away from the road if it is blocked. What's it? With your shoe, you remove them when you find them on the road because it might hurt you. Quickly, quickly, one, please. Very easy. Quartz. Quartz. Quartz is a mineral. So what is the rock? Quartzite. 
quartzite quartzite is a rock yeah yeah quartzite is a rock right uh, so that is mo monomineralic rock which is entirely made of uh, quartz siu2 right so chuda maniki hadanne ekenne ne quartz wali inna tiruwana palinku kiyanne right so uh, that's it <clears throat> so anyway uh, the other rocks that i described like chanokite or uh, condalite or like uh, rocks uh, we discussed granite uh, all these rocks are mono uh, not monomineralic they are polymineralic rocks they composed of more than uh, two minerals at least okay so anyway the rocks as i mentioned can be igneous made igneous means made of from magma magma or lava okay and uh, sedimentary sedimentary means uh, made of uh, sediments sediments means eroded materials which are deposited in low lying basins and uh, later uh, they compacted and formed into uh, relatively robust uh, rocks or metamorphic metamorphic means uh, meta means actually uh, change morphic means shape so the shape changed means the texture change actually uh, this term describes Uh, originally igneous or originally sedimentary rocks can be converted into metamorphic rocks as i said uh, when they are subjected to physical uh, conditions like uh, changing physical conditions like uh, pressure and temperature so for that you have to bury these rocks in the earth crust or uh, collide in a tectonic uh, regime right uh, likewise uh, some tectonic process is required to uh, change these metamorphic uh, Uh, rocks actually uh, the stuff available in this igneous or sedimentary material uh, will get transferred uh, or converted into new uh, new uh, minerals so original igneous minerals or original sedimentary minerals will get uh, turned into different minerals uh, under the solid state conditions so this is the important thing this is happening at solid state conditions for example if you had uh, mica in sedimentary rock or igneous rock that can uh, be subjected to uh, changing pressure and temperature conditions and converted into even corundum it's possible right because they contains aluminum a lot of aluminum is there right so this uh, will uh, will react i mean they will uh, change into new mineral but under solid state conditions only the factor uh, required is to change pressure and temperature conditions okay so uh, for example if you have lot of aluminum in your sedimentary rock you can subject it to high temperature conditions uh, and uh, relatively high pressure conditions uh, but not very much moderate pressure is okay like uh, 10 kilobars 8 kilobars may be okay uh, but temperatures in excess of 800 degrees should be there and it can be transferred into sillimanite okay you know sillimanite is a semi precious gem Uh, it can be uh, converted into i mean the mica just normal mica that is available minera talatu minera right not min uh, not minera talatu minera right uh, minera is graphite right not that uh, talatu minera is uh, biotite uh, mica oplogopite like uh, those things can be converted into even uh, precious stones gems okay even uh, corundum can be made out of that if you make it into Uh, high pressure conditions relatively high pressure condition kyanite can be formed right this is also a, a, a semi precious gemstone gem variety right so anyway uh, in uh, metamorphic processes all this uh, gem formation happens right so even in solid rock you can find these gems mm. uh, ruby corundum you can you uh, ruby sapphire you can find uh, in uh, metamorphic rocks frequently right and these rocks when get eroded uh, weathered and eroded during some millions of years thousands of years and then millions of years uh, they uh, transported into low lying basins and deposited as alluvial uh, gem deposits like in ratnapura right uh, this these minerals were not found and these gems were not uh, occurring in uh, surrounding ratnapura they were far away they were coming they were coming from far away along the streams uh, during some millions of years uh, time course of the millions of years time that's why they are rounded also as i said before right if they found if they are found very close by regions then these minerals should be uh, having very angular uh, shapes so uh, in some places like in uh, india as i said i think last week i mentioned uh, they mine hard rocks for uh, rubies right they have this uh, metamorphic minerals uh, on the rock itself so you can have a hammer hit it and extract the gem right because those are not alluvial deposits those are just in situ deposits we call in situ deposits 
very close to the rock or on the rock itself. Okay, so anyway, in metamorphic rocks, there are a lot of uh, gem varieties you can find. Right. So igneous rocks, uh, for example, granite is an example. We will learn about these things later uh, in detail. Uh, so this granite uh, uh, is a uh, is an igneous rock uh, due to magma crystallization. Due to magma crystallization uh, in the Earth's interior, inside of the Earth, not outside. I mean, not in a volcano. Volcano is outside, right? In outside uh, igneous crystallization, lava crystallization, you never see this type of a rock. You see here, you can un identify mineral grains. That means they are relatively large uh, pieces, right? These are minerals, different minerals, maybe mica, maybe feldspar, potassium feldspar, quartz. These things are there, right? These are uh, visible in with your naked eye. But if you go for a uh, uh, volcano, you will see nothing in the uh, rock as separate grains. I mean, very tiny, very, very tiny. Even you can't uh, use your hand lens or even microscope uh, to identify them. They are so fine, like flour. They are very, very few, tiny grains. So because they are subject to very rapid cooling, because this cooling uh, of lava takes place on the surface. So lava is very hot. As we discussed, the magma from the mantle is uh, like 1000 degrees Celsius. And when it comes to the surface, it's like 30 degrees Celsius. So there's a huge temperature gap that makes them to quench, actually. It takes very rapid cooling so that there is no time for the minerals to grow. So that's why you see very, I mean, you, very tiny grains to appear, right? Even you can't see with your naked eye. But this type of uh, rocks, they are crystallized at the interior of the uh, crust. Uh, without coming into the surface. The magma is here, slowly cooling, because inside the crust also uh, hot, right? Maybe uh, 700, 600 degrees Celsius. Your magma is like uh, 1000 degrees. So the temperature difference is only a few hundreds of Celsius. So uh, it's not rapid cooling, uh, slowly cooling, and therefore uh, relatively bigger grain sizes can be found. But when this magma comes out as lava or whatever, uh, and rapid cool, rapid cooling results this type of uh, rock with very fine grain. We call it very fine grain, and uh, we call this uh, coarse grain, bigger grains. But some magma uh, come to the surface, but still cool very, very, very slowly due to some reasons. Maybe uh, they uh, they have some other secondary effects, or uh, they cool uh, within the interior very slowly, right? and exposed uh, to the surface later, right? So they produce huge crystals, like tourmaline, topaz, you see very large crystals, very beautiful crystals. That is, uh, they have ample time for grow, growth of the crystal. So therefore, they grow into very big sizes. So this we call pegmatites, this type of igneous intrusions we call pegmatites. Actually, these pegmatites you can find inside the uh, rocks. And uh, you see uh, very beautiful uh, crystals uh, appearing in there uh, in many places, right? So you can find uh, a lot of uh, topaz, uh, moonstone, like uh, very beautiful ones uh, available with crystal shapes also, right? So anyway, uh, these are the types of igneous rocks that can be formed right? on the surface or at the interior of the surface. Sedimentary rocks we can find uh, in three main ways. Uh, you can see uh, <clears throat> deposition of uh, weathered remains of uh, other rocks. That means uh, originally uh, available rocks like this, right? They can be weathered and fragmented and uh, eroded away and uh, deposited in a low line basin. There, uh, you can find as clasps, fragments of uh, rocks. Like, uh, see, these are the deposited uh, layers of these clasps, uh, sediments. Or otherwise, it can be deposition of the Results of biogenic activity, biogenic activity. For example, uh, in the ocean, there are a lot of biogenic activities which makes some materials to deposit, right? So these can be deposited in layers, right? So phosphate, like uh, dif different layers. Appetite is uh, another way of uh, deposition of uh, such kind of uh, <clears throat> sedimentary rocks. And also there is another way that is called precipitation from solutions, right? Precipitation from solutions. 
uh, some solutions, some chemical solutions can precipitate uh, materials uh, due to some uh, chemical reactions. So these also uh, makes sedimentary rocks to form. And then uh, the other one is the metamorphic one that I mentioned. So these were these are resulting from transformation of pre-existing rock types. So that we already mentioned about that either igneous or sedimentary rocks or even metamorphic rocks itself previously formed one can be further changed due to uh, physical uh, property changes, uh, physical parameter changes. Physical parameter means pressure and temperature, right? Pre-existing rocks, uh, which we call the protolith, this protolith can be taken into deep interior due to tectonic processes that we discussed like subduction, collision, or like the, uh, those processes and change the, uh, uh, the, the ambient uh, pressure and temperature conditions, okay? So these uh, metamorphic changes uh, can be a uh, change of form actually. That's why I mentioned that this is a solid state process, not a uh, <clears throat> liquid, uh, liquid formation or crystallization from a liquid or something like that, right? So pressure, heat, that means temperature, uh, can change physically and chemically these uh, protoliths, okay? So this is how uh, the sedimentary rock can be changed into a metamorphic rock. For example, here you have a slate, uh, one rock called slate, right? Actually, these slates were previously used for a arisa is called a gallal like That is a slate that's made of uh, sedimentary rock. But when it uh, was subjected to uh, metamorphism, uh, you you make a very robust type of a slate variety. Okay. Uh, the limestone makes, uh, as we said, marble, and also uh, sandstone makes uh, quartzite. Right? You you can remember, you can imagine quartzite how hard it is. But lime, uh, limestone or sandstone, it's very loose type of rock, but still robust, but not very robust. If you have a, uh, if you just drop it on the floor, it will break. But uh, the quartzite piece, you might not easily break, uh, if even if you drop it uh, on the floor. Right, so these three type of uh, rock varieties are available, and uh, <clears throat> uh, with uh, the atmospheric conditions, all these rocks uh, can be eroded away. Or in physical uh, physical uh, conditions, uh, if uh, it uh, is exposed to sunlight or uh, extreme uh, cold, like winter times, uh, they can <clears throat> also physically damaged. Right. So these physical damaged rocks can be transported uh, in terms of erosion, uh, like uh, mud or soil or whatever, <clears throat> and uh, they can uh, they can deposit in low lying basins uh, to form uh, other types of rocks. Bio erosion can also be there, uh, for example, due to human activities or even uh, <clears throat> even roots of uh, big trees can make rocks fragmented. Okay. This is also again uh, this uh, disintegration, uh, what we call in general uh, uh, weathering. Okay, so these are the changes uh, happening uh, for the rocks. So weathering here you have very good example. Uh, disintegration of these rocks cause this type of uh, features to appear. Okay, uh, so through natural and chemical processes can also be there, even biological processes as I mentioned before. So the rock cycle is the <clears throat> one that uh, we have uh, due to these uh, continuous processes. Uh, being a cycle, you can't uh, pinpoint one place, but uh, uh, since we know that uh, the mantle uh, contributes to all these activities, uh, we can take uh, these uh, igneous rocks as the starting point, right? Magma or lava, okay? So different types of rocks, uh, different names are there. You can learn about these uh, rock names later on under petrology course. Uh, anyway, these uh, rocks form on the surface uh, as igneous rocks, okay, uh, by crystallization of magma or lava uh, through the volcanism. And then they are get weathered and eroded and disintegrated into fragments, right? So this may be gravel or sand or silt, uh, depending on the grain size, right? So these are called sediments. So these sediments, uh, when they deposited, get deposited in low-lying basins and uh, 
due to uh, accumulation of one by one layer on top of each layer they get uh, some pressure applied there so that they will compact uh, converting into this uh, uh, loose fragments converting into a, a, a fairly uh, robust uh, rock type that is what we call sedimentary rock and then these sedimentary rocks can be subjected to high heat and pressure uh, within the earth's interior due to tectonic processes uh, that will convert them into metamorphic rocks, right? So sedimentary rocks can be converted into metamorphic rocks and also the igneous rocks, the same igneous rocks uh, can be subjected to similar weathering and uh, or even uh, directly, uh, directly without going to sedimentary process, they can directly go into the earth's interior uh, at the, uh, at the uh, tectonic uh, <clears throat> uh, boundaries. For example, oceanic crust, it is entirely igneous rock, basalt. Right? It, it does not convert into fragments and sediments and then go into deep interior. It directly goes into the interior at the subduction zone as the oceanic crust itself. It goes down, right? We saw many examples, right? So that will produce a metamorphic rock, another, uh, uh, another composition with another composition. So if the metamorphic rock has the protolith of, from an uh, igneous rock, then we call it meta-igneous rock. Right, that make metamorphic rock you can call meta igneous, that means metamorphosed igneous rock. Or otherwise, if it is sedimentary rock, then you can call it meta sedimentary rock, that means metamorphosed sedimentary rocks. Usually, the sedimentary rocks are uh, aluminium rich composition because a uh, lot of sediments are aluminium uh, and silica rich, but a lot of igneous rocks they are uh, enriched in uh, mostly iron and magnesium. And silica right but of course there are aluminium rich igneous rocks as well uh, but uh, <clears throat> most of for example basalt or the oceanic crust is uh, entirely of uh, uh, iron and magnesium rich but uh, the granite like rocks they are aluminium rich right so anyway uh, this is the rock cycle uh, where you can uh, see uh, different processes natural processes taking place uh, to uh, appear and disappear uh, different types of rocks. So these rocks contain a lot of gems uh, of your interest and some of these gems still can be found within the rock itself. Even in the igneous rock, you can find the gems, right? Peridot is a very good example. You can directly get it from an igneous rock, right? Ruby sapphire like things you can get from metamorphic rocks, not from igneous rocks, right? Uh, likewise, uh, all these uh, rocks uh, use uh, the uh, minerals to form them and also gems are uh, kind of a sink inside uh, these rocks. They are accumulated inside the rocks. So we will learn about uh, these processes and uh, uh, these uh, varieties of rocks and minerals uh, in a separate uh, lecture series in another uh, preliminary course. Okay. So I think with this, uh, I can, I can uh, finish uh, our first uh, series of preliminary lecture series. Uh, and I hope uh, somebody else will uh, take up uh, to introduce you some other uh, processes, uh, which is uh, taking place uh, in the Earth's planet in the coming weeks. And uh, again, uh, somewhere we will uh, meet uh, again uh, with the uh, new course we meet. Uh, with a preliminary or detailed uh, dis description of a uh, subject matter, right? Your course unit is not complete. Uh, I completed only part of that. Uh, somebody else will take up uh, from the next week onwards, okay? So uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask uh, now. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, if not, uh, you can uh, ask me, uh, I have given you my contact details and also uh, emails and all. Uh, you can ask uh, if you have any query in the uh, future also. Uh, and uh, I will provide you these uh, recordings, but not right away. Uh, once you go on with your, uh, your other lectures as well, um, I will provide because I'm not allowed to provide straight away these recordings. 
uh, because uh, it may give you some kind of i mean previously we have some bad uh, consequences uh, because uh, people expected the lectures recordings uh, they know that the lecturer will give you the recordings so they uh, refrain from coming for the lectures but i i did not i did not ex uh, see that happen to you uh, to i mean your batch uh, because i can see a reasonable uh, number of uh, attendance uh, the, remember the attendance is very important uh, if you don't have 80 percent attendance you are not eligible to sit examinations in the pgis that is a, a requirement uh, regulation and also uh, you must uh, complete all the payments uh, as uh, given uh, according to the given instructions uh, so that uh, you will be eligible for examinations okay so I will finish uh, the today's uh, lecture now and uh, hope uh, we, we can meet again uh, sometime later. Okay, uh, see you then. Have a nice day. See you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir.